Good morning everyone, it's Christine here and I'm here for Thrifty Thursday and this video is dedicated to Elizabeth Carter who um, encouraged me to keep up my thrifting. She finds it an educational experience. I was joking that my partner had kind of said no more thrifting, the craft room is overflowing but she said nope, I've got to keep going and, and share what I thrift and what I plan to use it for because she um, enjoys yeah, hearing about that and thinking about what she can go thrifting for herself. So I've been lucky because I've been on holidays this week with my nephews and niece and brother and sister-in-law visiting and we've been doing lots. I've had a few times where I've been driving back and I've been able to pop into a couple of thrift stores. So I've got some goodies to show you today. This first lot um, that we'll start with is from a um, op shop that's just near mum and dad's house um, where I grew up and it's one of my favourite op shops. Everything's so clean and lovely and well packaged um, and really good prices as well. So let us start. I'll just move a few things out of the way. Let's start with this lace. So it's a lace fabric, but it will be really great. And it does have a few little like stains on it, but it'll be great because I can cut out individual lace flower elements um, or use it as sort of sections of lace. And there's just so much here for a few dollars, including some really, these are the really big, big pieces as well. And it's got a lovely edging on it as well. You know, I love my, love my laces. Haven't been using, oh, I've used them a little bit and particularly in my little Easter, Easter scrolls, but this will de definitely give me plenty to be able to dye some as well. So I can have different, different colored laces. So I'll first start gnawing away at the little, little pieces and save the bigger piece for, for something else. And always happy to, to gift away, particularly if you're local to me in Melbourne and you'd like some goodies, shout out. Then I've got these cute little tulip um, buttons. Um, so they're just four, four little buttons there. I might put them over with my button stash over there. I got a cute little felt, doesn't look like it's ever been used, but definitely hand, handmade, um, little felt flower pin cushion so that will definitely come in handy and I'll put that over on my desk got a beautiful cut work tablecloth never know if you'll get something that's got stains or in perfect condition usually that at this shop they will actually say if something um, has stains on it oh it's not um, a tablecloth it's a pillow cover big pillow big European size pillow. Oh no, not European, the other size. And that looks like it's in really good, perfect condition. I can't even get it all on, all on frame. But no stains on that are visible. And everything at this shop, they always um, launder and um, iron it before they put it in the store. What does it say? It's actually, it's not a handmade one, I don't think. 100% cost cotton washing instructions, hot machine wash. Um, so machine made, not hand detailed, but um, for two dollars you can't can't go wrong for some beautiful, beautiful cotton, cotton fabric. Um, but that one, oh, it actually does. It has a tiny, tiny little stain there, so that means I can, I can chop it up with abandon. Um, and then some Appleton wools, which it can be really, really expensive, and this is five dollars for the lot of them. So let's just have a look what we've got. We've got a nice gray orange the purple's been used a, a little bit but the gray and orange haven't um white a blue don't know if that is an appleton or a different type of wool that one um and then this one's a tapestry wool another tapestry a tapestry wool and then some more appleton wool so that would be a fortune if they were bought bought new so an absolute bargain at five dollars for the bag of those so I hope you're all having a great day. I'm enjoying the time time off. This one's got a little stain, so again, I can feel free to, to use that. Um, and with these pieces, you get quite a few options. One, you can use the beautiful linen, um, or you can use a section of a cut in one of your slow stitches. You can take out the individual elements. You can use the edging pieces as well. And so I've got 
So yeah, it's got little yellow stains on some of the fabric. Again, you can, if you've got stained fabric and you don't want to use it with the stain, some of us don't mind having a few little um, stains in our pieces. We think they add to the, the effect. You can also tea dye it or coffee dye it. Probably tea dyeing is better because coffee dyeing, you get a bit more of a, a smell to it. Um, yeah, you can tea dye or other natural um, dyes. You can use, yeah, beetroots, you can use avocado, all sorts of all sorts of natural dyeing. You can rust dye as well. And then these, this is a beautiful, beautiful linen. Again, a little stain over there, um, but beautiful uh, embroidery work on that. Um, I think they've been quite well used because there's even a little bit of um, a hole. I know Rachel over at um, Roxy Creation, she loves and, and treasures her hole. She never wants to use them. Um, but as I say, I just love how this op shop just presents everything um, really, really lovely. And then this one was just a plain linen piece, um, but it's got like reinforced stitching around the corners. But again, I'll just be able to use that linen um, as part of my slow stitch pro pro projects as a backing or something. This bag of goodies is $5 for the lot. Let's have a look what we've got in here at this hanky bag. Some people might think, oh, hankies, I don't want secondhand hankies. But you, often these um, decorative ones have never actually been used. So a lucky, lucky horseshoe. flatter beautiful little embroidered one here another beautiful embroidered got a few little stains on it but what you can do is just fussy cut out around either around just this central section or around this section add it to your work and it's just such fine beautiful little little detailing on it another one which is just a printed a printed one but again you can cut around the flowers or use a section of the flowers or a um, one of the squares of it this one looks like just a beautiful plain one um, but it's just such a lovely um, tight woven but really soft cotton or linen I'm not sure and then just a simple one on it it's got a little a little ball on it Wimbledon there you go. Don't have anything Wimbledon so far in my collection. And just an old style one. I still use hankies because I prefer not to put tissues out into the into the universe. So I like to use hankies. Oh, isn't this sweet? It's got little um, teacups and cakes and things on it. And then again, beautifully soft, obviously well used and well loved. Um, just to print it again but you get lots of different different bits that you can cut out or you can just yeah use a, a square of it or a side of it as part of your your background and similar one similar design in the orange and then a little kids hanky again it seems to have been very well used because it's just so so soft I just wish you could feel how soft and lovely these are with lots of little fun motifs on it. And again, you can cut those individual motifs out. They would have been great in like the snippet, snippet rolls to add them in. I don't know, yeah, they do repeat. So they're the same sort of, yeah, repeating, repeating motifs. And then a plain white one, a printed blue, blues and greens, and again, more green. This one's got, looks like it's had someone's name written on it maybe. And it's got a little bit of staining on it. And it's got a J, I guess that is. And again, you can cut those monograms out. I'm trying to think if I've got someone with a J in my life. And then you've got lovely blue and yellow sorry I was just distracted looking out the window my neighbors back from her holiday in um, in India I just saw her out in her front garden and another nice printed one so so many for five dollars such a such a bargain another beautiful printed one this one hasn't been as as much used it's not as super soft some more beautiful printing and again, you just get lots of lovely bits and pieces that you can cut out or use. Some greens and greys. 
and very soft again with little stains on it and this has just got a beautiful hand crocheted um, edging on it so that is a lot of hankies for five dollars I won't even count them all because that will just be tedious but actually I don't need to put them back in their bag I'll be giving them a wash if needed although I think yeah as I say this shop tends to just have everything in very nice condition so I think all the volunteers actually wash them. So this says two dollars on oh, no times two. Oh, and two dollars. Um, not food cover. So I'm not sure what that means. I'm just going to snip the label off while I'm at it. So it looked like a sort of a meshy. I did look like a synthetic, but I just thought, um, yeah. And this bit in the back, I was interested in as well. So it is. Just a, yeah, a meshy sort of um, tablecloth, I guess. A table cover or a table throw. Um, unless that said, no, it does say, oh no, net food cover. Not not food cover. It's a net food cover. So you'd throw this over your, your table to protect it um, from insects or other things, I guess, if you were eating outside. But again, this mesh um, is, can just make a lovely sort of background because you can crinkle it. Um, you can also dye it. Um, being a synthetic it might not take the dye as well but I generally haven't had a problem um, and then you've got just lovely little border pieces as well being a synthetic it might um, fray a bit more if you cut into it but that will be great to use I'll just fold that up and put that back in the box bear with me while I do the folding so it's Thursday here, Thrifty Thursday. So I thought I'd, I'd got them um, over the last couple of days um, when I've been coming home um, from three different thrift, thrift stores. And I just thought, yep, Thrifty Thursday, I'll bring them all out and bring them inside. Just left them in the back of the car to, um, until I needed them. So this is, looks like someone's done some hand decorating um, of some gum nuts and things. And again, it's just a, a meshy, um, a synthetic mesh but it's got again just some nice lace around the outside that could also be used um, and some people actually put mesh um, a fine mesh or netting over their work when they're adding lots of um, raw edge pieces because it just holds everything in place I haven't tried that before myself um, but I might need to need to do that I might keep some of that for that purpose. I'm sorting out my craft room today because I've just got so much stuff in it um, that isn't in sort of sorted themed boxes. So I am just going through everything. It's also with my birthday goodies. I need to make sure they sort of find a, find a spot. Now I got this little sewing kit because I wasn't sure if this would be a um, nice little, it is a, a fabric-y, it's not plasticky. Um, it's a, yeah, it's like a coated fabric, I think made in England that's very cool I mainly wanted it for the the little tape measure because I thought yeah I love using those in my pieces but I also thought these little um, threads were super cute and I'm planning to one day do a little um, slow stitch haberdashery inspired um, journal so that's a rusty needle so I think I'm not sure about this needle whether that's rusty I think that's okay so I'm going to put that in my pin cushion this one I'm going to get rid of, so I'll leave it in the felt, and I don't think I need that, that pin either. Um, but yeah, these are really cute little threads and made in England, so they're quite old, I think, um, pearl. So I'll keep those in there and put them in my little box for when I come to do my haberdashery inspired um, slow stitch fabric book up on the shelf then I've got a lovely piece of and I think it's a linen or a linen cotton and it's just got lots of squares on it with little stitching um, in between and so you could either use sections of this or you could even cut out the individual um, sort of yeah, squares or a bigger sort of set of squares and put individual little stitching um, projects in them. 
Um, and again, it feels really, really lovely. That's not a stain, it's just a bit of green, green third right? And then pillowcases. Um, as I say, I often have a look at the, the pillowcases and the bedding because you can get some really nice fabrics. So this feels like a really nice cotton. Let's see if we can find a point a label. Maybe no labels, but yeah, definitely a, a cotton. So you've got a nice gray, gray print on the back. You've got some fun bluey printing on the front. And then you've got flowers that you could do some uh, thread painting of or cut them out because again they've got um, yeah they're distinct and separate so you can fussy cut them out and then you've got another design over the second um, the other side of the front of the pillow and these ones again can be cut out they're almost like little um, mandalas or something and then nice shell pattern so one two three four five five different fabrics out of one pillowcase is pretty good oops and then i've got another one of the um square ones that we looked at just before so i won't fold that out what have i got here see i forget what i get i just madly go into the shop and put stuff in a bag and so this is really sweet have a look at this little raised um flowers so I'm going to have to work out how those were done because they are really, really cute. Really lovely. And the stitch work's just so, so neat. Definitely hand done. Um, and this is just a little, I guess, a little guest towel, perhaps. So I'm not sure I can chop this one up, but I do want to know how they, they did. They probably just made little individual stuffed. It's very firm, not got any sort of give given it not sure and then a cut work piece here 100 percent warm wool which i think is cotton um I'm, is that german i can't remember but yeah natural fiber and then a round cloth. Um, just having a look, it's got some very tiny little holes there. But otherwise in pretty good nick. But again, I'm thinking I can cut out sort of individual um, sections. These are all just little, um, almost sort of like cross stitch style bits. It's very sweet. Oh, there is a little stain there. So yeah, that one can definitely go in the, the cutting up. Which is good, don't have to feel guilty about cutting it up. This one's got quite a bit of um, age, age staining on it, but as I say, I actually really like that. Um, and this one's small enough that you can just incorporate it whole into a slow stitch project. Then we've got some more, we were looking at these before. And another one of that. And then these ones we looked at before as well. So there's just a few more of those beautiful linen um, pieces. And then this one is a mostly um, or partially finished, I guess, because nothing's been done in the background. Um, beautiful, beautiful tulips. Again, I was thinking of um, Susanna and Corinne who are working on Susanna's um, old style techniques. I probably didn't quite get the title right of that. And they were doing a cut work tulip recently. And I know, I think Corinne's added some other tulip imagery to her pieces. So Corinne, shout out if you want some old cross stitches and little uh, tulip buttons to add into your, your stitchery. And then, oh, sorry, there's still a few more things. Um, so a bag of threads for five dollars and again if you buy these ones online you'll end up paying a lot more than um five dollars oh it looks like i've got a real bargain because this one used to have six dollars on it so i've actually managed to get one bag for that's quite the bargain it's got a very old rubber band that looks like it's about to fall apart oh and we're all a bit tangled up here what's happened there 
take that off. I want to get this rubber band out that's just corroding. Let's just pop that little rubbish bag over here. What have we got? We've got some emerging out of the bags. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So some of these are used, but that's fine. And then another. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So eighteen um, is a pretty good, pretty good selection. I might actually put them back into that bag. I'll put the rubbish over here behind me. So eighteen sets of threads for five dollars. And then this one is a little stitch kit, which are a great thing to look out for because, again, you get um, a lot of threads, in this case for 50 cents, plus um, the fabric base, the sort of um, stitching. What's it called? The Ada cloth, I think it's called. And it's got a cross-stitch cross design as well, whether I end up using the design, but it gives me some, um, yeah, some great fabric to use and some threads as well. But who knows, maybe I do want to stitch a little bluebells or little strawberries there. Kind of cute. That could be a good one maybe to take on our next holiday because I always like to have a few little, little projects with me. So it's made in Denmark by Perman of Copenhagen. It doesn't look like it's been, been used. Maybe someone picked it up on their, their holidays and brought it home. And then um, a bag of little random... I think this was in the 50 cent pile. Um, I saw a few things in here that I thought would be particularly good. Um, I like the PLA um, cotton and I like the old style PLA, so that's lovely. That's almost got the, the real sheen that the razzle dazzle ones that I got as part of my birthday package. This is a very old one. Pearsall's Fibrone Rayon. Shade number 800, made in England. So that's lovely. So I had my eye on those in particular. These other ones are just more regular, regular threads, some tapestry wool and some, some lace. So I might keep those specialty yarns over here and the others I'll pop in the box. Um, got to sort out all my, my yarns. And then a little box of um, little press... I guess little press stud sort of like decorations that I think I can add to my um, stitchery. You push them in and then you fold the little, um, you push the little, sorry, you probably can't see, you push the little spiky bits over to basically hold them in place. And I thought like when I'm doing a Christmas piece, being able to put a little star on the top of the tree, for example. Um, so there's all different shapes. There's little, oh, these are little diamantes actually. They're little diamante beads. You never know what you're going to get. Oh, there's a blue blue diamante, but you've got stars and circles and squares in there. So that's that's definitely handy. I don't think this case closes anymore. So I'll put that to the side so I don't end up with them all over the floor like I did with my beads the other night. I knocked one of my tins and it flew open and cleaning up beads for about half an hour. So let's grab our next bag of goodies. Hopefully I don't drop anything else off on the floor. I'm just needing to make a place where I can land my land my bag. Um, so this is from an op shop um, a bit past where we live. Um, and I haven't been there. I followed them on Facebook and often see good good goodies. And they help a lot of um, like domestic violence victims who can come into um, the shop sort of out of hours and pick up um, whatever homewares or other things they need. So I really wanted to support them because they also do a lot of charity work and donations to, to 
um, yeah, local local charities. So it's funny, I actually bought this particular piece because I really liked this blue um, trim with little um, like grapes um, along a vine. So I'll keep that out for my my trim. Put it in one of my trim bags over there. But this very lightweight netting, which is often from curtains, is again really great to add into your slow stitch um, projects because it is nice and, and lightweight. Let's just have a look what image it might have in the center. Oh, it's got a beautiful, um, like a castle scene. That's really lovely. So again, who knows, one day I might wanna put a, a castle in my background. Oh, and we've got lots of animals and other things. Often it's just like a floral, floral decoration. We've got a bit of thread on it. Who knows, is that the op shop's thread or mine? We've got a crest, uh, sorry, not crest, a crest with two rather jaunty looking um, deer. Castle up there and we've got Vivit Pos Fun Ira Virtus. So I wonder what crest this is. Oh, there we are, Nottingham. Nottingham, there you go. So, oh yeah, and we've got a person, we've got a, an archer down here. We've got another castle scene over here. Got lots of nice floral swirls and elements. So there's lots that can be, can be cut out. We've got a nice little um, country, country scene. So I guess if you put this white on a, um, a standard colored background, I'm just peering around to see, I think I actually packed away. I've got a grey here, hang on, let's see how this would look if we put it a big wadge of grey. This came from the reverse art truck, they had a massive roll of it, so I thought that could be... Yeah, so it actually really stands out quite nicely, and if you had it maybe on a black or something, um, it would really, really stand out. So those will be lovely to incorporate into some of my, my slow stitch pieces gives me a really great start and then I could just do some yeah some over over stitching so that's a lot of fun I'm glad I got that I'm glad the trim took me in the direction of that, that piece um, and you just never know so it's always worth getting a few few surprise pieces and then this one's got rather the worst for the wear in the middle of it but again it's got really um, and if I turn it over the right way it would always help to look at the embroidery um and so yeah the embroidery is still in great condition but even that's got some little little nicks around it but perfect for perfect for cutting cutting out and then a little green and again hand embroidered and a little cut work piece there and a beautiful linen um, on that and just even the little edging details are really lovely some Badenberg decoration here with lovely embroidery on it as well and another cross stitch Piece and again can cut around. This one feels like it might be a synthetic or partially synthetic that it's on. And another one with lots of um, crocheted pieces where you can cut out the individual um, crochet pieces, even the sections of the edging, um, even the ones in the middle. And again, it's got some staining on it, so no worries at all in cutting that up. That's some of it. Let's get the next next stash of goodies out of the bag. We have some more beautiful embroidery and, and cut work. Look how delicate this one is. Um, cross stitch flowers on this one. And it's a little bit the worst for wear around the edging where the crocheting is sort of starting to come undone. But again, you could incorporate either this hole because it's not too big or cut out parts of it or sections of it um, and some more crochet just to 
again it's um, a little bit frayed so I'll be probably reducing this down just into its individual elements to have those on hand for slow stitching and I can tea dye some of them so they're, they're nice, nicely vintage, vintage sized. Um, this one is a tablecloth I'm assuming five dollars and it's a beautiful and it's got beautiful textured um, that sort of check that lines in it is beautiful little bobbly textured um, so these which I still like to use some of these um, tablecloths I'll see if it's big enough but otherwise I can turn it into into citry but it doesn't look like it's got any stains or anything so that might be too good to cut up just now just take the label off so I can give it a wash and then have a good look at it. Let's take the little piggy bit out. Okay. And a big piece of linen, I think it is. And it's got just a nice little speckle through it. So it's just a really nice natural coloured um, linen and a big piece to to use for backgrounds or cutting sections of it. It's really nice to have those, um, yeah, that sort of old style linen. And then this shop had a great, oh, actually I'll get one more, a few more bits of embroidery out first. Then we'll have a look at the other, other stuff. So another cut work, cut work piece. And a big old tablecloth. And this one I got for the lace edging, although it's also got a nice linen in the middle. Um, but again, all of this um, lace edging can be either used as a section of lace edging, plus all of this as well. I think it's all probably, yeah, it's just, um, oh, that's so machine sewn on. Um, but yeah, you could unpick it. Um, probably quite easily I think um, or you can use sections of it again like that so that's a very big big tablecloth oops sorry I think I just um, knocked, knocked the stand and then a beautiful little um, cut work piece again that you can use in its entirety as part of a, a slow stitch background and then there was a whole lot of um, fabrics in a fabric bin and again that's a great way to just get a bounty of goodies so this is a really nice green um, pale green with flower, large flowers on it which I thought could make a really nice background um, a nice stripy um, rainbow colored fabric again you can just use sections or if you need just a stripe of of a particular colour, um, lovely. Reminds me sort of of the Kath Kidston style. Um, beautiful flowers and a very pale polka dot. And then just some basic white. It's quite a heavy um, fabric and woven. Um, I think I've got Travis hairs out of the bag. <laughs> um, but lovely how they present them with the little bows on them. You feel like you're going into a, um, a fabric shop and yeah, getting their best, best goodies. So yeah, I was very impressed with my first visit to this op shop um, called Persian, Persian Place. The first op shop's the Mekla Care in East Malvern. This is Persian Place in, not sure what suburb it is, but Persian Place. Um, I think it's op shop or it might have something else in its name, but P-U-R-T-O-N. But I'll pop some links below if you are in Melbourne and want to check these op shops out. Um, that would have been the original pricing. And so yeah, beautiful little check. And then a beautiful yellow, um, not striped, diamond design with um, flowers on it. So that was all the goodies from the Persian Place Op Shop. And then I also just dropped into the one near here where I don't usually get as much. Um, I've only been a few times, um, and but I got a few goodies. So I got um, this lace. I think it was two dollars for the huge ream of it. Um, it's not a stretchy one on this occasion, but it's a gathered, gathered one. So that will be handy. I don't have that many, that many gathered ones, but a lot there again. 
um, another bag of threads for five dollars and these are pillays by the looks of it in the main but let's have a look inside as well as some wool so most of these are unused we've got some more appleton wool which is great we've got a one that i'll just need to wind on because it's a loose a loose black that's not part of the wool i don't think i'm gonna have to get those untangled Going to be a bit of an untangling exercise. I might leave that one on the bench um, to untangle. And then we've got some, yeah, some lovely Pearl A DMCs. So plenty there. Um, which are just good compliments because I already have a, um, embroidery floss in virtually every cover. I got a big um, pack of that. It was actually a Egyptian cotton embroidery floss, not one of the mainstream brands. But it's really good um, so I'm always just looking to now complement it with other sorts of threads and then I got a bunch of doilies um, again that can be cut into sections or cut out for their individual elements so I just look for different different designs and ones that have plenty of elements that I can cut out this one I thought was a really interesting it's not often that you get the sort of the square the square ones and again you could cut down there and there and have your yeah your individual squares or use it as a as an entire background piece this one's small enough to be a full full background but again if you wanted to deconstruct it you could always nice to find the really small small ones um, because that yeah they can be they can be cut up either in a row um, or individually Another one there, really intricate design on that one. This one's just, yeah, lovely. Obviously been very well used as well. It's quite, quite soft. Um, so again, this would be lovely to incorporate potentially whole into a piece or possibly a section, section of it. And then another little one that can be used, used whole. It's more in the bag. So another one where you can deconstruct and you've got a lot of smaller ones around the outside. You've got those ones. You've also got these um, lengths of um, crocheting and around the edge as well. You can just use corner pieces or longer pieces. So you can get a lot out of those. And then cut work piece. I think it's got a little bit of staining so I won't feel bad cutting out those, those elements. And another doily here as well. It's um, yeah, starting to unravel a little bit. So again, suitable for cutting. Another, another doily. Beautiful soft in the middle. So someone has obviously yeah, very much loved these pieces. And now they can go on to live a new life in stitchery. Um, competition, who can tell me what this um, was for was it for little little scones I don't know or was it for something else it does look oh yeah but opens opens up so maybe it is a scone now who did I see someone else had a little a little scone carrier but I'm not sure I'm not sure if it'd be big enough to put put scones in maybe it was for something else I don't know but anyway it's got cute little roses um but I might once I know what it, what it is um I could even use it on my my sewing desk with something something in it who knows bit of fun and then um, a really good selection of multi-colored beads um, so blues and purples and golds another very sweet little one that can be used whole or taken down into its elements a big one here sorry i'm just gonna have to cough <coughs> getting a bit of dust um, so yeah beautiful work around the outside lovely embroidery not sure if this one's hand done or machine machine made and then this one's beautiful and soft and it's got oops and there's one there it's got some lovely embroidery work I think this is one's definitely machine done just by how intense the the design is it's got butterflies 
small butterflies and then a repeat of the design down that end and then cut work around the, the edges so it's really sweet. I'll have a look if that has stains after I've given it a given it a wash um, as to whether I keep it whole or I might have to scan that one in as well um, before I if I'm going to cut it up. And then this one again just for cutting up and, and using in its in its pieces. So that is my thrifty Thursday haul. Um, I really am going to have to keep proceeding with my tidy up of my craft room but I thought I'd do the video now because it can get a bit a bit bright with the sun shining in. It's a blue sky day here. So take care everyone. I hope you're having a fun thrifty Thursday if you've had the chance to pick up some goodies or got the chance to head out. Um, but I better best not go um, thrifting for a little while now um, because I think I've got a lot but let's see if I can get my craft room nice and nice and tidy and everything sorted into its um, requisite boxes I might be able to find a bit of room for a future future thrifting so thanks Elizabeth for the encouragement I hope you enjoyed today's video and take care everyone and thanks again to people that are subscribing and liking and commenting it really does mean a lot to me bye everyone